So good evening and welcome to A Course in Miracles. We now continue from where we left off, which was lesson 350. And we now go on to the final of the big questions, what am I? And ultimately, the what am I question is the only true question we can ask while we appear in form. And the answer of what I what am I is really just answered in the reversal of the question. I am. And once we state I am, the what, the how, the who, all of that disappears. When we truly, through the I am statement, realize our one indivisible, capital S self or Christ self or extension of God self. We are the kingdom. So what does it say? It says, I am God's son, complete and healed and whole, shining in the reflection of his love. Now, who is this I am God's son? So what I've said before, and you've heard me say this before, in A Course in Miracles, when we speak of Christ or Christ mind, we speak of the extension of God, a cell in God, a mind in God that has fallen asleep. A part of the mind is awake, Christ mind, a part of the mind is asleep. That part of the mind which is asleep has a decision maker. It can choose for right-mindedness or it can choose for wrong-mindedness. That mind which is asleep has fractured. It's had lots of thoughts about what it could be because it's forgotten who it is. And each form thought has seemed to take a form, thought form. And those thought forms are then projected into physical, physical form, us, body-mind appearances. So a son of God is a fractured appearance, body-mind. Christ is the dreaming mind. Christ meaning the awake part of the dreaming mind or ego, the sleeping part of the ego mind. So make that clear distinction. So when the Course speaks of God's Son, it's speaking directly to you, an appearance of the dreaming mind, or God's sons, or God's son, you know, God's sons are the appearances, the body-mind, the human being appearances. So this statement is a statement of the recognition of ourself is a fracture of the Christ dreaming mind. In me is his creation sanctified and guaranteed eternal life. In me is his creation. Who's his creation? Capital H. God's creation. Sanctified and guaranteed. Why? Because the essence of what I am, the Christ, I am the Christ. The real essence of me is Christ. In, in, in Hindu Vedanta, it's Atman. Christ is Atman. And Atman's essential qualities is that of Brahman. Atman dissolves into Brahman. In me is creation sanctified. Christ realizes self, realizes his holy self, and guaranteed eternal life. It's always been there. It's just the recognition, the guarantee has always been there. Always been there. In me is love perfected. Now, was love not perfected? No. In me is love perfect, perfected as in realized. Fear impossible. Realized. It's not possible. And joy established without opposite. The essence energy I am, the very essence of my capital S self, is joy. God is joy. God is peace. God is love. God is happiness. The essence we share with God. The Bible says we're made in God's image. No. We're made from God's essence, energy. Now, of course, the Course doesn't say energy anywhere, and some dogmatic fool is now going to say, no, it doesn't say energy. Then go somewhere else. This is not for you. I use other teachings to triangulate and really reinforce the non-dual teachings, the non-dual mystical teachings that is A Course in Miracles. I am the holy home of God himself. I am the heaven where his love resides. The sonship is the kingdom. And since the son, Christ, is one of however many infinite limited numbers of sons, in other words, sons, ever extending light, we are that in which God abides. God is spirit and abides in us. We are spirit, we abide in God. One indivisible self. Where does the father start and, the, and end and the son begin and end? It's one indivisible extension. I am his holy sinlessness itself. The recognition of our sinlessness. This is what we're stating. 
for in my purity abides his own. God's purity is my purity. The idea that what God creates can be in any way tainted is preposterous blasphemy. We are the kingdom. We are perfect love. Our useful words, words, symbols twice removed. What is a word? A word is we are energy. Energy has taken the appearance of fractured thought. Thought projects, perceives, and that perception is then vibrated through the body-mind identity, and it sounds like a word. Words are but symbols twice removed. Our words are our useful words is almost over. Yet in the final days of this one year, we're now we're talking to one another and ourselves. We gave to God together, you and I, fractured brothers, realizing we're all our one indivisible self. We found a single purpose that we shared. Bodies cannot unite. Minds are uniting. The minds are coming back into itself. And thus you joined with me. So what I am are you as well. One indivisible self. One holy son of God awakening to himself, to his Christ itself. The truth of what we are is not for words to speak nor describe. And many have tried. And the closest we will get to is to say perfect happiness is the recognition of our one shared self, of our true essential nature. That's it. That's as close as we get. Even closer, silent stillness. The word, the, the, the truth of what we are is not for words to speak nor describe. The minute we try, we're going to turn it into a dogma, into religion, into a mantra, into duality nonsense. Yet we can realize our function here. And words can speak of this and teach it too. If we exemplify only, we exemplify the words in us. What's it, to exemplify is to live by example. It's Don Miguel Ruiz, um, four agreements. Be impeccable, impeccable. Your words, your actions, your thoughts are aligned, impeccably aligned. And what is our function here? To forgive ourselves for dreaming a dream that never happened, for apparently forgetting what we are. How can we truly forget what we are? We can just dream we have. We are the bringers of salvation. Every single one of us, not some are more spiritual, more advanced, course in miracles people are the ones that bring salvation. No, no, no. Every single fractured part of us brings salvation through their own unique way, whether it's kicking a football, racing a motorcycle, teaching a course in miracles, teaching yoga, being a policeman, being a teacher, being whatever you want to be, okay? It's in our own individual way. And all of us make up, all of us are parts that make up one single puzzle. Every single one of us will self-realize into one self, one holy self, one indivisible holy Christ. We accept our parts as savior of the world through which our joint forgiveness is redeemed. Through our joint forgiveness, this world is redeemed. In other words, returns because... The entire universe is illusion. But where is this illusion taking place? In our mind. So what's this illusion made from? The same essence of ourself. So this entire universe is reality. Appearing as a universe of planet, celestial bodies, planet Earth, trees, people, places, things, and events. Actually, what's truly there is just pure energy, just light. But filtered through the perception of a mind that has fallen asleep, believes it's separated, projects its separation out into what appears to be out into the essence of it's actually just light. we accept our parts as saviors those that bring the we see through the illusion and realize what we look upon is actually reality many non-dualists says this world is an illusion no this world is pure reality appearing as something that it's not the appearance of the world, the appearance of the universe is illusion, a, an hallucination. What's really there is just pure light, pure energy, pure love. And so the acceptance of ourselves as saviors means we bring true reality into our awareness, which has fallen asleep and become unconscious consciousness. And this, our gift, is therefore given us. Because as we offer it, what's we offering? We're offering the miracle of Perception reversal, thought reversal. Our gift is therefore given us. We look on everyone, all fractured parts of ourselves, as brother. 
and perceive all things as kindly and as good. It's a decision we make. Decision, right-minded. We do not seek a function that is past the gate of heaven. So imagine there's a gate. When you step through the gate, I am this, I am that. Step to the other direction of the gate, I am be still, full stop, I am. And the I am becomes I am, God is. Silence stillness, ever extension. What we ever pretended to be dissolves. Disappearance of the universe, disappearance of the dream. No memory of ever having had a dream of form and space and time where form and space and time appeared as matter. Formlessness appeared as matter. We look on everyone as brother and perceive all things as kindly and as good. Decide, decide. It's a choice you make. We do not seek a function that is past the gate of heaven. Don't worry about the future, what happens when you die, what God really is, just abide. And the knowing comes. Knowledge will return when we have done our part, our part to forgive, 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 until nothing triggers us anymore. We are concerned only with giving welcome to the truth. Ours are the eyes through which Christ's vision, the dreamer, Christ, that which has dreamt up the universe, Christ, sees a world redeemed from eyes, from every thought of sin. Ours are the eyes through which our true self sees a world redeemed from every thought of sin. Ours are the ears that hear the voice for God proclaim the world as sinless. Ours are the minds, many minds, fractured minds, that join together, fractures join together, as we bless the world. Why? What are we really blessing? We're blessing the memory of what we are. So ours, the eyes of human beings, the eyes of the fractured selves, the selves are that, the fractures are that through which the dreamer experiences itself in order to remember itself. So body-minds are projections of energy appearing as form, appearing as humans, trying to remember itself. Each thought has a different part to play. Each thought goes wandering in a different direction, trying to remember its true essential self. But as one thought in the dreaming mind awoke to self, Jesus, that thought becomes joined with the awake mind, Christ. And now that Christ-minded awareness is now shared with all the fractured thoughts that have forgotten themselves as to what really created them, what they really are. And so over millennia, each fractured thought starts to remember it isn't real. The essence of itself is real. Its true self is that which dreams. And so it chooses no, to long, no longer dream, to awaken to self, right-mindedness, miracle-mindedness. Ours, the minds that join together as we bless the world, right-minded, Christ-minded. And from the oneness, one indivisible self, that we have attained, we call to all our brothers, asking them to share our peace and consummate our joy. Join with us and be ourselves knowingly. It's what Jesus did, and it's what all of us are doing when we start to awaken to self. We are the holy messengers of God who speak for him and carry his word, capital W, to everyone. His word, his truth, his memory to everyone who he has sent to us. We learn that it is written on our hearts. We the holy messengers. We're not special. Okay. So when we fully align with our holy self, our only function now, while we still appear in body-mind, is to serve as reminders to each of other, to one another, to our fractured selves, that we are the self, the holy self, the Christ mind. We all are identical in truth. The appearance is the illusion. We are the holy messengers of God who's, who speaks for him and carrying his word to everyone to whom he has sent us to. In other words, to every, anyone that God has sent, us, sent to us. We learn that it is written in our hearts. Hearts, heart temple, our truth, our soul, our essence, energy, our self in all of us, our awake self. And thus our minds, our little fractured minds, appearances, the act, mind activating agent of spirit are changed about the aim for which we came. Why do we come here? To attain love and to prove to God that we could usurp, usurp his power. And we were wrong. 
and we admit it now. So we change our minds about, about the aim for which we came and which we seek to serve. So now we choose to hand this device over, this appearance of a device over to the holy memory of ourself. Holy memory, Holy Spirit. Therefore, to be examples for one another, to truly be miracle-minded, miracle workers. What is a miracle mind? It's not going around hand healing bodies. It's realizing self and sharing the knowing of self with others by living a life where we dem demonstrate and exemplify peace, joy, lightness of being. We bring glad tithings to the Son of God. What Son of God now? As I explained earlier, the fractured selves. The dreaming mind awakening to itself, who thought he suffered. Son of God is the part of the mind that dreams. Christ mind, the part of the mind that remains forever awake. The son of God, the sleeping mind, fractured itself into billions of sons of God. Those sons of God are realizing they don't exist as fractures. They're becoming one indivisible self. Back to one son of God, dissolves into Christ mind. Christ mind dissolves as the extension of God forever. That's why I say we're not God. The essence of us is, because it's the essence of God. But we are sons joining, becoming one Christ self, Christ mind. And what is Christ mind? Ever extension of God, the ever eternal loving extension of God. We bring glad tithings to the son of God who thought he suffered. Who thought he suffered? The dreaming mind. The dreaming mind thought he suffered. Now he is redeemed. Now he realizes the truth self. And as he sees the gate of heaven stand open before him, it's always been, he's never left. He will enter in and disappear into the heart of God. Son of God disappears into the Christ mind. Christ disappears into God. It's just the eternal extension of the infinite lightness of being, the infinite love energy, which we call God. What happens to the appearance of the universe? Planet, space, time, matter dissolves. It's just pure light, ever extending. How do I know this? It's scripted in my heart. It's scripted in my holy memory. Don't believe me. Do not believe me. Go find it for yourself. Please don't listen to a single word any Course in Miracles teacher tells you. They know shit. The reason they're Course in Miracles teachers is they're seeking for the truth. If they'd found the truth, they'd be quiet, sitting somewhere at home, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, riding motorcycles. They certainly wouldn't be teaching. This doesn't know shit. I know nothing. I can only share with you my own direct experience and i'm here to share with you my direct experience not i'm telling you the truth i'm sharing with you my interpretation of a course in miracles why so you can bounce it off your own ideas hang on to what you agree throw away the rest that you don't don't believe a single word i tell you don't believe a, don't believe a single word any course in miracles or anybody teaches you or tells you discover for self because you don't want more knowledge and wonderful theoretical constructs of religion and theology and spirituality. You want direct experience. We're at this level of the course now. Direct experience. So let's move on to the lessons. Again, like I've said, you can do one a day or you can do all 10. And by the time you've done 10, you've done 10 times. 10 times 10 is 600 billion. Holy Spirit's mathematics. Okay. Every time you do it, it reinforces the awareness of what you are in, in yourself. Don't believe me. Just put it to practice. Lesson 351. My sinless brother is my guide to peace. We are each other's guide to peace. Mirrors of one another. Reflecting to each other where we stand in our awareness as we join as one indivisible mind. My sinful brother is my guide to pain. Why? Because it's showing me the pain within myself. And which I choose to see, I will behold. So it's a choice. I've fallen asleep. I've imagined what I am. I'm imagined I've sinned. You know, I now fall with, with guilt and fear. And I've now projected it outwards. And I see sin, fear, guilt everywhere in the world. I realize it's not real. I realize I'm the one self-dreaming. I accept everything I see. I realize it's all sinlessness. It's all perfect. It's all shared truth, shared essence of myself, which I share with self and God. And so forgive means I realize to true forgiveness is to realize none of this is real. 
it all gets reabsorbed back into myself. It's now time to use this discernment, not judgment. Judgment is of ego. Discernment is of self. Discernment says, don't put your, hot, your hand on that flame. It's going to get burnt. Unless you want blisters and go to a doctor, don't put your hand there. Discernment. Judgment says, this is right. This is wrong. I like this one. That's evil. This is good. This is bad. I'm spiritual. I'm more awake than everybody else. Look at me. I'm a course in miracles. I've read this for 20 years. I'm now so superior. I can quote verbatim the entire book word for word including all the commas dot the i's and cross the t's look how special i am ha. one indivisible self you can't be more awake than the collective the height of anyone's individual's awakening is the collective's height that's it like a lava lamp you go up you get mixed around in the ooze and you come back down multiple multiple appearances of ups and downs, incarnations. None of it's true. One indivisible self-dreaming. Remember that only. We judge. We judge ourselves. We judge what we are. We judge where we imagine we must be. We judge what we think created us. We make up a fictitious God. We give him all sorts of human characteristics. God has no characteristics. God, pure God has only got qualities. What's God's quality? Joy, peace, love. Humans have characteristics and there's gazillions of them. Thousands of self-help books that, that get you to decipher human beings' characteristics. None of them are true. It's all made up. So we judge those characteristics. We project it outwards in the choice we choose to see. Blame everybody else for our misery. And then it's seen, reflected back at us. Oh, look, it's real. Okay. And then we judge our projections, reinforce that they're real, reinforce that we're real, reinforce that the dream is real, and then cry out to God or worship God and please help us. But we insist on hanging on to our illusions. Projection is the opposite of extension. Projection is disassociation. And disassociation from what? It's like your foot's asleep. Oh, this is not my foot. I can't feel it. Chop your foot off. Watch the pain come. The minute you disassociate and you try and separate, divide, segregate pain. Projection is a disassociation of your fractured cells. You can't hate any of this. Oh, this one's toxic and that one's evil. You have to love all of it because all of it is you. If you still see evil in the world, it's inside your mind. If you see toxicity anywhere in the world, in any workplace, it's inside your mind. You're now holier than thou. Oh, that's a toxic environment. No, it's toxic in your mind. You're an empath and you're a victim. It's you. It's all you. When I point there, I'm pointing at myself. One individual fractured into 8 billion human body minds, 9 septillion beings throughout the universe. One indivisible cell. The fractured cell is a filter. This body mind is a filter through which the dreaming mind sees itself and experiences itself. You don't experience anything. The dreamer is experiencing himself through you. You're an activity of experience for the dreaming mind. Therefore, you don't awaken. You realize I'm not real. You realize what is real about you, self, holy self, holy spirit self, and you let the identity go. The identity doesn't awaken. The identity is the seeker. Seeker can't awaken. What is it, what is it going to awaken to? Seeker realizes I'm not real. That's the closest it gets. That's what enlightenment is. This isn't true. That's what moksha is, self-realization. This isn't true. The little self isn't real. What's true is the essence of what I am, the life force, my essence energy, the presence of the all-pervading love I am. And the minute you recognize I am, I'm not this. Who is my brother but your holy son? So what are the fractures I see but your holy son? Fractures of the one dreaming mind. And if I see him sinful, I proclaim myself as sinner, not a son of God, not the dreamer alone and friendless in a fearful world. Remember, we see only what we want because of dissociation. We've already projected it outwards and blamed for causing our misery. And thus, we never recognize we're the dreamer. We could talk for hours about wars and who did what to what and whom and what was done by Hitler and what was done in the Crusades and what was done 4000 BC. We're doing it again with every judgment we have, separation. Separate, separate, and therefore never self-realize. If I see him sinful, I proclaim myself a sinner, not a son of God. 
Yet this perception is a choice I make and can relinquish. I can let it go. I can choose again, Holy Son. I can also see my brother sinless as your Holy Son. As I see him sinless, I recognize myself. And with this choice, I see my sinlessness mirrored back at me. My everlasting comforter and friend beside me, around me, all around me. We project from within. And now we bring it all back within. One indivisible self. Not Jesus, my comforter. Something outside me. Some fictitious character 2,000 years ago. Jesus' apparition. Not true. Christ, essence, which Jesus encompassed. That's true. And with this choice, I see my sins. My everlasting comforter. Myself. And friend besides me, within me. And my way secure and clear, which I go within. It's yeah. It's always yeah. Closer than close. Choose then for me, my father. Through your voice, holy memory. For he alone gives judgment in your name. And what's the judgment of the holy voice, the memory of God? My son is sinless and perfect as I've created him. See, at first we have this externalized savior, this objectified savior, a Jesus, a Buddha, a Ramana. But when you realize heaven is just energy, light, love, there's no you and I and me and Jesus and everybody else in heaven. One indivisible self, pure light, extending pure light, pure love, extending pure love. Choose then for me, my father. Because I don't know shit. I don't know anything. These are all concepts. Every word I've said tonight is a, is a concession trying to point in the right direction to the point that no words can be used. And then we go quiet. Choose then for me, my friend. Through your voice, through your holy memory. My holy memory alone gives judgment in your name. None of this is true. The self I am is the eternal extension of God. Now, remain vigilant. Keep your lanterns burning. The thief comes in through the back door in the middle of the night. Ego comes back and then recaptures everything you've learned. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then makes you a spiritual special person. And then you're back into body, mind, identity. You're more special than your brother. Stay vigilant. Use discernment. No judgment. Catch yourself judging them. Beat yourself up. Stop. Don't try and fix it. Don't try and discuss it. Return to silence. Always return to silence. Problem comes up. Don't try and solve it. Return to silence. No judgment is a conscious choice. And through conscious choice to right mind, conscious becomes conscious awareness. Consciousness drops. Awareness of awareness. The self being itself knowingly. Lesson 352, judgment and love are opposites. No judgment. Catch yourself. And what is judgment? It's resistance. It's complaining. It's moaning. It's finding fault. It's rank ordering. It's finding importance and less importance and complaining some more and judging some more and comparing. Judgment. From one comes all the sorrows of the world, but from the other comes the peace of God himself. So where does sorrow come from? Judgment or love? Judge, judgment cannot love and love cannot judge. Judgment and love are opposites. Choose wisely. Choose once again, Holy Son. Forgiveness looks on sinlessness. Sinlessness alone and judges not. Through this I come to you. I return to God. Judgment will blind my eyes and make me blind. Trap me in people, places, things, and events. Trap me in the filters of awareness. Yet love reflected in forgiveness here. Here and everywhere. And always here now. Reminds me you have given me a way to find your peace again. I am redeemed. In other words, I get back everything I think I've lost. When I elect to follow in this way. Forgive, forgive, forgive until you realize nothing to forgive. You have not left me comfortless. For I have within me both the memory of you, my source, and my love, and the one who leads me to it. Who, who leads me to it? 
my holy self, my holy memory. Father, I would hear your voice and find your peace today. It's a decision we make. For I would love my own identity, capital I here, myself, ca capital S. That's the true identity, the Christ, the extension of God's love. And I find it in the memory of you. Where's the memory of you? Our holy memory. Holy self, holy self, temple. Identity, our true identity is spirit. God is spirit. And therefore, our identity must be, we're made from spirit. Therefore, we must be spirit. God is holy. We are spirit. Holy Spirit too. The holy memory is the Holy Spirit. It is the memory of you. It's our essence. It's retained within us. It's contained within us. That's why it's go within or you go without. Our true essential nature, the true essence of what we are is God nature. What is God nature? Love, peace, joy through our perception. It's the word love, peace, and joy are concessions to silent stillness, the joy of silent stillness, the infinite joy of being. That's what it is. That's the closest any word can even get close. Closer even is be still with a smile on your face. Lesson 353. My eyes, my tongues, my hand, my feet today have but one purpose. To be given to Christ, the extension of God, to bless the world with miracles. Christ is the awake mind, right-minded. Son of God, wrong mind. Awakening to self. We now offer the body-mind, the device that the ego made for separation, for exile, to try and usurp the power of God. We give that to the holy memory, to our holy spirit, to use to awaken self and selves, both ourself and ourselves, one individual being, one indivisible being, one joyous love extension of God. Christ is our true self. Christ is the dreamer away. I choose to be truly helpful today is what the next sentence says. Father, I give all that is mine today to Christ, to right-minded, right-mindedness, miracle-mindedness, to use in any way that best will serve the purpose that I share with him. Now, remember, we have a him, so don't go, Jesus. Christ is the essential self we share with Jesus and the rest of our fractured selves, one indivisible holy self. Nothing is mine alone. For he, my true Christ self, and I have joined in purpose. So the Son of God body mind projection has joined with its true self, Christ mind. Been reabsorbed back in it. Knowingly now. Now we move into conscious awareness. Thus is learning come almost to its appointed end. Appointed end means a more need for learning because there's now knowing. Knowing is increasing. No more understanding. We've transcended understanding. Into the peace of God we are. But while I work with him to serve his purpose, how can I be truly purpose? You know, how can I truly serve? What's his purpose? Awaken self. Through practice of forgiveness. Then I lose myself and my identity, my Christ self identity, and recognize, here it is. Those of you that want to argue with me, Christ is but my self you are christ oh jesus you are christ jesus became christ recognized himself as christ no more jesus when you recognize you are christ jesus and self are one all eight billion are one even those you don't like everything collected into one indivisible mind one christ mind no more judge you are christ Yes, there's a place for Jesus when you knew at the course and Jesus said, and Jesus said, and Jesus said, Jesus said nothing, nothing but 2,000 years ago. What did Helen hear? The voice for Jesus. At the beginning of the course, she heard the voice in a dialogue. She immediately associated to her highest form of deity, Jesus. Towards the end, Helen was quiet. Why? Because she realized it was the voice of Christ. Now, some are going to argue and they say they know Helen. I don't give a fuck. Go somewhere else. It's not for you. This is complete non-duality, complete non-dual Christian mysticism spoken through Course in Miracles. If you want to argue, go somewhere else. I ain't interested in your shit. You've had 2,000 years to argue. You are Christ. Wake up to self. It's time. It's time. Put away the Jesus sandals, 
the worship, the kumbaya, the holding hands, the hugging, the looking into each other's body, mind, eyes. Stop that shit now. Be still. Close your eyes. You don't go off to a silent retreat and pay money to go to a silent retreat where you sit with other people in silence. You're just absurdly insane. Take that money and give it a charity, to a cat charity. Go feed the children, feed the kittens. Sit at home, wherever the hell you are, and be silent. Where the fuck you want to go? But be yourself knowingly. I hear so much rubbish in this course community. It's time to stop. This is discernment. This isn't judgment. It's time to be conscious. It's time to be your Christ. Is your self. There it is. In writing. Go read it yourself. Lesson 353. Realization. I and my father are one. Indivisible self. Indivisible essence energy for ever extending the love we are. No more storytelling. No more worshipping the guru or the teacher. I don't give a damn how long he's been teaching. Whether he's Ken is, his name is Ken or David or Lou or whoever the fuck. Just messengers. Just illusionary messengers. Stop putting teachers on a pedestal. You are the Christ. Awaken to self. Holy Son of God. Now. We'll switch this off. Go somewhere else. Okay. I don't need worshippers. I don't need people telling me how wonderful I am and I don't eat and I walk on water and I'm supposed to be transcending in my life. My skin is so translucent. Stop that shit. We are all Christ. Every single one of us. Even the clueless ones. Even the clueless ones. Even the warmongers. Even the horrible people. Regardless of which side of the border they sit on, which religion they follow. Every single one of us, our true essence is Christ. Remember lesson 353. There it is. You can put the book down, walk away, go be happy and go be of true service. Go be truly helpful. That's it. That's put it down now. If you're still listening, well, okay, you need another smack. Here it comes. Turn the other cheek. Lesson 354. We stand together, Christ and I. We recognize I am in peace and certainty of purpose. And in him, as his creator, as he is in me. Fractured selves, fractured characters, awakening to self. Sons of, sons of God being recollected into one Christ mind. The recognition I am. Full stop. God is. Full stop. No more words. Extend the love we are. My oneness with the Christ. My oneness with that which dreams me up and has now awoken to self establishes me. As your capital S son, the extension of God, beyond the reach of time, the primordial awareness of awareness ever extending and wholly free of every law but yours. What's God's? God only has one law. You know what it is? Give your money to Lewish. There's teachers that say that type of shit. If they're charging to teach the course, they fake. They're charlatans. They're lazy motherfuckers. And to go work and go and serve. Not blah, 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 blah. And please give me your donations. It's go give your donations to people starving, not lazy motherfuckers teaching a course of miracles. I have no self except the Christ in me. Be thyself knowingly. The world doesn't need another teacher, minister, reverend. These course people that are calling themselves reverend and minister may leave a fork, Maralis. Yelis van yelis sinne Translate to Afrikaans. Wake the fuck up. You're becoming like Christians. You're dragging this thing into dogma. Of course, it's very specific. Learn it on your own. And you do this. You, you share with each other so you can bounce it off and look at different perspectives. If you don't agree, go somewhere else. I have no self except the Christ in me. The Christ is the self. You are the Christ. You are the self. You are the holy extension of God. What else do you want to know? Regardless of what problems you have, whatever you're chasing, none of that's true. Abide in silent stillness. Forgive. Give gratitude. The memory of your true self, of your Christ, returns to you. Does it sound, Ugh. because this is how it flows through this, through someone else, it's going to sound all happy, and Jesus loves you. Someone else, it's going to sound all whatever. 
through this. This was the persona. Way back when, this was grrr. Now it still flows with passion. Not for everybody. I'm not trying to amass followers. Can't join me. Can't send me your money. Don't need it. Don't do retreats. Don't. Just not interested. Why? Because I'm going to offend everybody. Why? Because I'm telling you the truth and it's not what you want to hear. What you want to hear is that you're okay and everybody else is fucked up. I have no purpose but his home. His own, what is his purpose? My self's purpose, to awaken self, if it means shake you by the neck. And he is like his father. Thus, I must be one with you as well as him. One indivisible self. Take those fucking teachers off their pedestals. For who is Christ? Accept your son as you created him. Yeah, touch it there. It's you. And what am I? Accept the Christ in me. Drop the mic. Who's Mike? A friend of mine. Drop the mic. And what am I except the Christ in me? You'll hear the alarm bells going. Pause. Stop. Go make a cup of coffee. Have three cigarettes and a Jack Daniels. Come back to this. And what am I except the Christ in me? You are the pure extension energy. Yes, I said energy. No, the course doesn't say energy. I am saying energy because it's the best way to describe non-duality. Energy. In, you learned it in science. Energy can't be destroyed, can't be created. It just moves from the form to the formless, back to the form. Back to the formless, back to the form. Now it's just formlessness, limitless formlessness. One indivisible self. One mind, one energy, one love, one infinite light, one infinite light of awareness, one infinite lightness of being. Be that knowing. Woo. Pause. Three cups of coffee, two Jack Daniels, four cigarettes. Start again. Go for a jog. Go dissipate some energy. Less than 355 and here it comes. There is no end. To all the peace and joy and all the miracles, mind reversal, not fixing bodies, that I will give when I accept God's word, God's memory, God's truth, God's essence, energy, the self I am. Why not today? What are you waiting for? Finish the course. Next year, maybe, when you finish the text, when you do the next retreat, when you give your money away, when you go to a next retreat, stop, pause. Best you go to grow. Because if you go there to blow hot air up your bumper, realize you don't have a bumper. You're blowing hot air up nothing. Go to celebrate. Go to join minds. But unless it's going to challenge you to be yourself knowingly, how many more retreats must you go to? Why should I wait, my father, for the joy you promised me, for the joy I am? Be that knowingly, for you will keep your word you gave your son in exile. Where's the son in exile? He's never left. I am sure my treasure waits for me. I need but reach out my hand to find it. You're closer than close. You don't have a hand. You are pure energy. Even now my fingers touch it. You don't have energy. You don't have fingers. It is very close. It is you. You just read it. You are the Christ. I need not wait an instant more to be at peace forever. It is you I choose as my identity along with you, ever extending. Father and Son are one indivisible self. Christ means extension of love. Anointed, the light of God, the anointed, holy, blessed spirit energy of God, ever extending. Your Son would be himself, capital H, and know you as his Father and Creator and his love. This is true creation, light ever extending. Temporarily falls asleep, creates ideas, fractures, filters, appears to be seeing space time matter. Billions of years seem to go past linear time. It now seems to be experiencing itself in eight billion little human monkeys running around talking shit. Okay. And God knows what beady beeps and aliens there are out there talking shit. All of it talking shit, no matter how spiritually, scientifically, Artificially, intelligently advanced they may be. It's all shit. 
Truth is silent. Truth is Christ. It's you. Go be silent. Go be self. Awaken to self. Awaken to love. And when you fully realize it, go out and teach in your own unique way. For free. Don't give up your day jobs. There's enough preacher, teachers, bullshit artists out there, each claiming to know and damnation and the good book and stamping their fists. Nobody knows shit. Not a single one of us knows shit. Truth is silent. Christ is silent. God is silent. Love is silent. Joy is silent. The essence energy you are is silent. Be still and know yourself. Christ. Woo! Take another break. Pause. Six cups of coffee. Two packets of cigarettes. A bottle of Jack Daniels. Let's start again. You've never left. You've never left. You're home, Holy Son. You're home, Christ. You're home, love of God. Sickness. Moaning, complaining is another name for sin, and sin is a name for error, and error is a mistake. It's dreaming. Sickness is dreaming. Healing is but another name for God. Awakening to self. The miracle is thus a call to him. It's either all a call for love or it's love extending itself. Father, you promised you would never fail to answer any call to your son that your son might make to you. You promised. God's answer is only in personal design. God doesn't answer me because you're asking for shit. People place these things in events. Oh, can she love me? Can he do this? Can I get a new job, a new car? God has no idea what a job, a car, a boss, a lover is. God just knows one son dreaming. Has no idea the content of the dream. He just knows the son's having a miserable nightmare because he looks miserable. His spiritual angelic face looks like it's suffering. I made that up. There's no angelic face. It's just energy. Got to tell it in a story. Father, you promised. This, can you hear the anguish? You promised. God says, ask me for what's real. I want the people in car and I want a Mercedes Benz and a Porsche and a house and a job can't i don't know what you're talking about ask what's real i want to know i want to know what i am ah i want to be happy ah you want to remember yourself i want to be joy ah you want to be yourself you want to remember yourself now you're asking god for reality now you're asking for something god can give you god can only give you the truth and that's a memory of yourself why can't god give you anything god can't give you shit why not you have everything how can God give you anything if you have everything? Why? Because you're an extension of God that has everything. See all these wonderful stories? God's going to give you abundance. God's going to give you fuck all. Nada. Zero. Mardo. Foco. Nada. Get it? God can't give you anything. False. Nothing. God can only remind you you already have everything. So you can only God ask God to remind you what you already are, have, and always will be. Oh, but God, you promised me. Yeah, I promised you the truth is what Father says. It does not matter where he is, what seems to be his problem, nor what he believes he has become. He is your son, and you will answer him with the truth. The miracle reflects your love, the truth. What's the miracle? Thought reversal. Be thyself knowingly. You remember self, and thus it answers him. Your name replaces every thought of sin. And who is sinless cannot suffer pain and therefore cannot ask for shit. Your name gives answer to your son because your, you call your name is, sorry, because to call your name is but to call his own. So God's name, your name, is the same, one indivisible self. So what's God's name? Now, J.J. Hurtick is going to tell you God has 72 names. And the Jewish religion is going to tell you God is whatever name, quantity. And the Christians are going to say it's Yodhe, Vade, and Yeshua, Ben, Obi-Wan, Kenobi. Shut the fuck up. Seriously, enough of that shit already. Let's throw all that bullshit dogma, scientific journal cock, and throw it out the window. Okay? Don't get stuck with words. Yahweh, Yeshua, blah, 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 bullshit. God's word is like this.
The closest you get to it is silent storms. One removed, Yahweh, Yahweh, Vahdeh. As a baby wake come, is born, in breath, ex, ex, external breath, Yahweh. That's it. Christ, God, Father, Self, One, Yahweh. Okay, let's make a whole science about it. Write a new book, become famous, become a millionaire, buy a fancy sports car. Shut the fuck up. Just be quiet. There is no name. There is no word. You, and even if there was, you couldn't possibly explain it. The closest you get to is, um, and even a cow gets that. It's the um. Okay? That's it. Simple. And even that's just vibration. And even that's once removed. God's name is silent stillness. Not God's name is si Mr. Silent Stillness. No, no. It's the silent stillness. And therefore, that's what you are. Be that knowingly. And how can you be that knowingly? Abide in silent stillness. Make it your daily natural state. Not meditation. Practice it until you can master silence. And then bring it into the world in your inner silence. Until it's time to teach but then you open your mouth and the minute you finish go back to silence oh the accelerant the thing that really awakens you to awakening is gratitude so throw a little bit of gratitude for what people place these things in events yeah gratitude for realizing self wow now that's gratitude for truth and then you realize forgiveness and gratitude and silent stillness is the formula how many years has it taken to figure that out? Don't get stuck with symbols and words and names. Less than 357. Smack, smack. Truth answers every call we make to God. Responding first with miracles. Thought reversal. Correction principle. Then returning unto us. To be itself. The essence of what we are, the whole universe, is reality, appearing as something it's not. The world's an illusion. The appearance is an illusion. Forgiveness, truth's reflection. Forgiveness is the equivalent of love in heaven, which is, where's heaven? Self, ever extending. Forgiveness, truth's reflection, tells me how to offer miracles and thus escape the prison house in which I think I live. How do you offer miracles? You see the whole thing as a miracle. You act as if the whole thing is a miracle. And you slap those across the head that want to talk dogma and shit and lies because they've had 2,000 fucking years to mess it up. And we've now, khatful, khatful, look it up. It's a very spiritual African Afrikaans word. Khatful, 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 okay? That's how you offer miracles. Khatful of kak and kakbrat. And now it's time to offer miracles, which is the correction principle. Here's the miracle. I see you as perfect. You are the Christ. You, Jesus, I, same indivisible self, the extension of the love of God. Be still and know I am. And you're, of course, not going to cast your pearls upon swine. You're not going to tell people who are devout Christians or Buddhists or whatever that this is, or the brand new Course in Miracles student. You're not going to tell, oh, you are Christ. You're going to those will come to you. Don't go searching for them. You notice I don't advertise my channel. I share with you, those of you who follow, that I don't advertise it. And you know what? I have a doctorate in strategy. I have a master's degree in marketing. I could be marketing zoom, zoom, all over again. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Start tracking across the universe, only going forward because we can't find reverse. I could be marketing myself famous. I refuse. I refuse. I put it out there. Whatever money gets made from the books I sell, straight to charity, do an audit, come look for yourself. This is for free. Truth is free. If you're making a business from selling the word, there's something wrong with you. And someone's going to tell you, yes, but it's divine providence. God provides. Okay, your holy son is pointed out to me, first in my brother, then in me. God's given you the tools. Go out and share it. But it's free. How dare you charge for something given you for free? Your voice instructs me patiently to hear your word, your memory, your truth. 
and give as I receive. And I look upon your son today. I look upon myself and my fractured selves, the sons. I hear your voice instructing, capital V, Christ mind. Voice instructing me to find the way to you. As you appointed, that the way shall be. And what is the way? Behold his sinlessness and be you healed. Behold his sinlessness. When Jesus performed miracles 2,000 years ago, you would see the blind, the sinner, the whatever, and see him sinless and see him perfect. Thank God for being able to see that way and offer it. Be that knowingly and your work should be free and it should be authentic. If you need to say fuck when you speak, say fuck, but mean it and try and be holy. They see right through you. They, everybody seeking is so used to seeing so much shit out there. Don't be another fake messiah, prophet, bullshit artist. Be authentic. The world needs crazy people too that teach authentically non-dual Christian mysticism or non-duality or at one man. Unity awareness. Ooh, we've made up another word. Let's start a cult. Mm, have fun with that. Lesson 358. No call to God can be unheard nor left unanswered. And of this, I can be sure. He ans his answer is the only one I really want. Now, again, you, son of God, you're praying to, through self, Christ self, to God. God doesn't know you exist as a body mind. God doesn't know Lou. And if he did, he would be going, gee, fuck, what the hell is that? Right? It doesn't exist. Self, we are the dreams, this. That, that's what's true. This is just dream character. And now we're speaking directly to God. You who remember what I really am, alone remember what I really want. I want happiness. I want to know myself is happiness. I want to know perpetual joy, perpetual peace, perpetual love. We all want it. It's the thing all of us want in different ways as we go about trying to acquire it in different ways. The truth word we just want is to be happy. The only reason we're unhappy is because we think we don't have what we want. And why do we want that stuff? Because we think it's going to make us happy, more famous, more important, more recognized, uh, more admired, more adored. And then we think we're going to be loved. When we realize we're loved, we don't need anyone to love us because love is what we are. You speak for God, the memory within myself. And so you speak for me, this apparition, this fractured self. And what you give me comes from God himself. Your voice, my father, then is mine as well. Repeat. Rewind. Your voice, my father, then is mine as well. One indivisible self. One holy voice. Which is silent. And all I want is what you offer me. And what does God offer us? Just the truth. And what is the truth? Unconditional love. In just the form, form you, cho you choose that it be mine. So it'll come in people, places, things, and events to mirror ourselves until we wake up to self. The minute you go pursuing it, you push it away. While pursuing it, it means I don't have it. Pursuing it means I'm resisting what is. And therefore, what I resist persists in what don't I have? Everything. So what do I get? Nothing. Abide in gratitude. And try and plan. God's laughing while we make plans. We've all heard that one before. Mother Mary too, just by the way. And Jesus, all laughing while we're making plans. Abide. <laughs> Let me remember all I do not know. And let my voice be still. Remembering. Play. See the play here? Your voice, my father, then is mine as well. And all I want is what you offer me, the truth, the joyous light, the being, the knowing of my being. Just in the form you choose that it be mine, the infinite lightness of being aware of being awareness itself. Let me remember all I do not know. How can I remember if I don't know something? It's because you've forgotten what you are. And let my voice be still remembering. A word on still. Quiet and still doing it over and over again, remembering that we can never forget. But let me not forget your love and care. 
keeping your promises to your son in, here we go, my awareness always. Awareness of awareness. Let me not forget myself is nothing. But myself is all. It's the little mini me versus the I am. Let me not forget myself is nothing. This body, mind, this identity, this thing that appears and dies and has wants and desires and needs to eat and use toilet paper, not real. But myself, indivisible spirit, ever extending the love of God, that is Christ, you. P, yourself knowing me. Lesson 359. God's answer is some form of peace, is always peace. Why? God's essential essence, God's essential nature is peace. When that peace moves, it's joy. Peace and joy, unconditional love. So God's answer is always peace, joy, love. All pain is healed. All idea of pain is healed. All perception of pain is healed. Now, sometimes you're going to have a pain in the neck and a pain in the leg and a pain in the wherever. That's because as body minds, we do stupid things. When you realize it isn't real, you realize it's trying to point something out. You've done something silly. You've carried a negative thought. You're carrying negative emotions. That's what the pain's there for, to show you your mind is not aligned. The miracle is aligning the mind. When the miracle is healed, the pain goes away. Oh, how come Ken Wapnick died of cancer? The script is written. That body mind was going to die of cancer. The script doesn't get rewritten. All that happens is he no longer takes it seriously. Script is written. You're going to born, you're going to die, you're going to die of this, you're going to die of that. It's written. The miracle is how you choose to see all of it. And therefore, as energy, you don't react negatively in resistance to energy, attracting more negative energy, which is all false. You move to alignment with the holy self you are, pure love is joy extending. And what do you attract when you are pure, pure loving joy extending energy? You attract only the awareness of pure loving joy energy. And so at the age of 77, you die of a bullet to the head. It was scripted. But you smile as the bullet travels through. And the last thing you remember is your Uranus as the 13th planet from the sun. All pain is healed. All misery replaced with joy. All prison doors, all stories, prison doors, stories of delusion, separation, suffering, guilt, victim, blame the world. All stories. Those doors are open. Stories gone. All shadows dissolve in the light of awareness. All sin is understood as merely a mistake. Father, today we will forgive your world. Whoa. But I thought God didn't make a world. Remember what I said earlier on? Everything you see is reality, but you see it through an hallucination. So what you're seeing is not what's really there. What's really there is just pure energy. So the world, the universe, is actually the essence energy of God, but appearing as planets, unicorns, libraries, librarians, trees, mountains, people, dogs, cars, but all of it's just energy. Father, today we will forgive your world, the appearance, and let creation be your own. Let the realization that it's all energy, all love, peace, light, all Christ, all of it's Christ. We have mis mis misunderstood all things, but we have not made sinners of the holy sons of God. The fractured mind, just mistaken, even though they do some stupid things and go to jail for life. What you created sinless, so abides forever and forever. Full stop. Such are we, capital S. And we rejoice that we have. Sorry, and we rejoice to learn that we have made mistakes which have no real effects on the true self, on us. Sin is impossible. In dreams, they appear to be real. But in truth, it's just a dream. No matter what you dreamt last night, you're not going to jail. Sin is impossible. And on this fact, forgiveness rests upon a certain base, more solid than the shadow, the world we see. That's what it is, just a shadow, just filters, clouds hiding the sun. The sun's always there. Help us forgive. Bring us into the awareness of to forgive us to receive.
for we would be redeemed, redeemed, regained. We want to regain the truth, regain the awareness of being our true self as the eternal extension of God's loving, joyful, limitless energy. Help us forgive, for we would be at peace. We choose again, right-mindedness. Lesson 360. Oh, now you need... Now you need a tranquilizer because, yeah, it's going to smack you on both cheeks and kick you up the bow. Here's the choice. Peace be to me, the Holy Son of God. Choose it. Own it. I am. Peace to my brother who is one with me, the Holy Son of God. Let all the world be blessed with peace through us because the whole world, the entire world, is the Holy Son of God. All of it in the entire universe. Every app apparition. Don't you believe in apparitions? Look, everything you see is appearing. All of it's apparition. What you cannot see is truth. The eternal light of awareness. The limitless light of awareness. The limitless love, which is joy. Father, it is your peace, capital your, your peace, that I would give, receiving it of you, I can only give what I have. I can only receive what we all have. Love is what we are. I am your son forever as you created me. For the great rays, capital G, capital R, the great rays remain forever still and undisturbed within me. Still as in forever, still as in quiet and undisturbed within me. Rays of light are primordial essence energy. Our self, pure awareness, pure light, pure light, pure light energy, pure love energy, pure self, pure Christ. The great rays, light remains forever. Truth remains forever. Still quiet and undisturbed within me and forever still. I would reach them in silence. There it is. And in certainty, for nowhere else can certainty be found but in the silence. Peace be to me and peace to the whole world. In holiness, all of it is created, all essence energy. And in holiness do we remain. Your son is like you in perfect sinlessness. Why? Your son is made from your essence energy. And with this thought, we gladly say, Amen, or no more stay. Thank you for joining me. Now listen again. If it's insulted you and beaten you up your bum, it's meant to. Holy Son of God, Holy Christ, Holy One Indivisible, ever-extending, limitless, loving, energy, light, joy of God. Be that knowing. You need a break now.